Brie and Lucas have just moved into their homemade tiny house. It's beautiful, you'll see it. We do a great big tour in this interview. Um, they're living in Brisbane, in Brie's parents' back garden. They've got a gorgeous setup. They've done a beautiful work with their design. It's a gorgeous aesthetic. There's a few retro hints. Um, there's a lot of little design innovations in there. They're building on a 7.8 metre protruding wheel guard tiny house trailer, which is actually an asymmetrical design. And we have it asymmetrical, just so one of the walls is set back slightly in terms of its width to allow for an awning to be folded down and clipped in for transport so that the entire tiny house unit with its awning down is still within the 2.5 metre width limit for Australian roads. So you can see, you'll see that too if you're looking through some of the Fred Stoney House's trailers options and that you'll be able to find their trailer there. So stick around for Brie and Lucas in Brisbane in this episode of Candid Tiny House. I hope you enjoy it. These are our steps. Um, to the loft. So they just slide out and then you just walk up them. I love that. That is such a good design. But yeah, I really learned on the job, which is I think probably the best way to learn anyway. Putting the bathroom wall in, it's like, oh, it's not quite lining up. And I'm like, yeah, that was my fault from the beginning. <laughs> see, hear, smell about each other, but that <laughs> just amplifies. <laughs> it's going to be way better when we start building every day. <laughs> Hi Brie and Lucas, thanks so much for joining me and doing an interview with me. I'm so excited because you've just moved into your tiny house. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, we're excited thanks to for be your with time. you. <laughs> Oh, well, I'd love to see the house. Would you Would you be up for giving me a tour, please? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll just take you to the front door. So this is our front door. We've got like big bifolding doors and they open right up. Which gives us a really nice like in and out. Just, yeah, the space is I think 1.6 metres in total. We also have the option of having two shut and just having like a flapper that you can just walk in and out of. So that's what we do most of the time. Eventually with time, we will have a deck of some description out there. And we've got a fire pit out the front and I'm working on a bit of vegetable garden and- Got a big awning. We've got a big awning, yeah. And the awning is a lifesaver. I would not do a tiny house without an awning. That is a very silly idea. It keeps <laughs> things dry and keeps the mud outside, <laughs> which is amazing. So, and it gives you a dry spot to sit and to drop your stuff. And so that's really nice. Is that one that you can fold down and travel with it? Yeah, it's designed to travel with it, like Fred's design, so. Right, and you've got one on one side or one on each side? Just one, so yeah. just the one on the north side. Um, and then the back side of our house, we only have one door. And so it's just this door. So the back side of our house, we've got like our line for our composting toilet to our absorption trench and it's underground, but there's just, yeah, it's more of a utility space than a scenery space. <laughs> yeah. Like all of our doors and windows and everything we salvaged, spent many hours sanding and repainting and then building frames, building frames. That was a learning curve, learning how to build a frame. Um, mm, that's a big job. Something <laughs> I'd never thought about. It's actually really simple, but yeah, but was, also a huge cost saver. So I think in total, like our total costs, including painting the windows and everything, in, including buying one new one, we got our awning one built for us. We were under four grand. Wow. So we originally had planned to have a big storage cabinet um, in this space so that it would have like a cut out for the window and you'd have like a window seat and then hanging clothes on either side. Mm -hmm. um, but we decided that's something that we could wait for. So we'll probably just install a bar under the loft and hang some clothes up there for hanging clothes. Okay. And then just have a rotating system, put four things you'd like to wear for the next little while up and fold the rest up and then, yeah. <laughs> and then up the top here, we've got like a mini, like a half loft, like it's 60 centimetres wide. Then these tracks here, so there's two tracks here, one here and here. Um, and then there's another two on the other side. They are designed to have uh, another loft part that goes up and down. So 
when it meets with this loft here, it'll make a bed space that's um, big enough to have a double bed on it or big enough to have like two maybe kid beds or like smaller beds, um, but that it can also be used for a space for Lucas to work, he works from home. Um, or that we can lower it right down or just like a hangout space if we want it up there. But we can also put it right up to the ceiling and have it completely out of the way. Um, and that's, yeah, just gives us our space down here. But we can also then bring it down to either level with the couch or level with the floor um, so that we have then another space that, you know, if I want to do a sewing project, I can do that. Um, but then just get it out of the way. Yeah, I think um, that's such a good idea. And what's the mechanism that um, hoists that up and down again? The hoist will be hidden in a corner and then there'll be some wires that run up this wall here. Yes, yeah. mm. And then it will go up the top and it will split and come to each corner of the loft and then that will pull it up and down. And it just travels on the tracks to keep it in spot. Many hours of designing to come up with something that simple. <laughs> <laughs> So then once you kind of come out of that space and that space is about um, without our cabinet on the end, it's about two and a, between two and two and a half meters. So it's actually like quite spacious. We had, I think six people or seven people mm. up here the other night for a cup of tea and, you know, three people on the couch, a couple on the floor, a few on a stool and, you know, you're in a small space, but we were fine. We had it somewhere to sit for everyone and a baby on the floor, playing on the floor. So everyone was happy. Well, that's good. It's a really good test of how many people you can have as a visitors at the one time. That's good. So yeah, then when you turn around, we have our kitchen um, pretty much for the rest of the length of the house until you get to the bathroom. So it's like a long galley on this side. When you come straight in the door, there's the shoes down the side here. Um, so you can just pop your shoes into there. I've got my handbag stashed in there. And this is like a breakfast bar and it's a bit skinnier. Um, and then over the wheel guard, we've actually got, like that's where Lucas has got all of the electrical hookups and everything in there. So he can get into them, but also with their hidden. So this is our bar window. So it goes right out. Um, on the other side, um, the bar window actually has another 40 centimetre piece of timber that flips up. So when the windows open, you can have people inside and people outside. So in warm weather, we've got space. We could probably have six people comfortably sit here if we had enough bar stools for that. So that's great. That, I really like that design. That's awesome. It is. It's really lovely. And that just all fits underneath of the awning when the awning flops down. And yeah, it's really, really easy, which is lovely. And that's your main table then, isn't it? That's your everyday every set. Yeah. yeah we knew that we didn't really want to design a set table into the space we have got plans that maybe when we finish building our couch in that we could have something like that where we have a booth style with a table that folds away or something so this works really nicely um, and then we've got some drawers over here that we just fold everything away and it goes into a drawer and then it's empty and then <laughs> right. we just pull it out again you need it so yeah so good that sounds great show me your drawers this is this is our building drawer this is still a sign that we haven't entirely finished we've got um all kinds of bits and pieces in uh, there. So we've got our sink over here and we've got copper sinks and they are i just love them mm -hmm. um that was a bit of a you know it's an unnecessary splurge but they're big and deep and yeah we've got the ability to wash on one side but then dry and rinse on the other side and then we've got um, mozzie nets up here. So they're just magnetic. And so we haven't got them on all of our windows, but because our windows are awning windows and they've got latches, we can just reach out and open the window and then just magnet shut the mozzie net again. Hey, I like that. That's great. And they just came from Bunnings, but you do need to buy super glue alongside it because the double-sided tape on the magnets is a bit rubbish. So along to here, where these are our steps um, get up to the loft. So they just slide out and then you just walk up them and onto here and then you've got the rest of them up the side there. I love that. That is such a good design. They work really well. And then in between that, we've just got like our, you know, our cut, like our plates and our cutlery and 
tea towels and you know all those things so there's all of the space is completely used over here we've got this is all of our food storage so they, they essentially this section here is food and we've all got it then stored in like square glass jars which just works really well and then we did get our cabinetry made for us um, which was a good decision for us at the time um, so yeah we gave them a finished design and they were just able to create what we wanted. On this side we have a like a three quarter size dishwasher. So that's like the best thing. We've never had a dishwasher. Um, and this is a, a lifesaver as far as tiny space because we drink a lot of tea um, and, so coffee. and coffee. And we just seem to always have this never ending pile of cups requiring to be washed by the end of the day. So they just go in the dishwasher. Um, and it just means you're just washing your pots and pans, which is so lovely. It's such a luxury, um, I love it. <laughs> it is, yeah, and it's a great, it's a, a Smeg dishwasher, so it's one of the only manufacturers that makes a 45 size. So over here then we've got our fridge, and it's a Mitsubishi fridge, it's 70 centimetres, and it's got like fold, like bifoldy doors at the top, um, but then the rest of it's drawers, so it has a really big freezer drawer, um, which has like got double compartment in it. Yeah, great. So that's the all best thing in the world and then down here we've got a really big vegetable crisper and they actually put the crisper as a separate section down the bottom because this is our main prep space you've got you know your foods here fresh fruit there down here we've got like all of our oils and sauces and baking gear in here great so it's just so compact and then any dishes go over there um so they don't take your space where you're trying to prep yeah, it sounds like you're finding it really functional, which is so important. Yeah. So then from there, we come down um, into the rest of the kitchen. We've got a Smeg gas cooktop and a Smeg oven. They're just standard appliances, um, full size, and a Thermomix as well. And then a big space here. Eventually, we'll have all our spice racks up in here. We're just waiting for the shelving on it too. We were look, wanting to go induction originally, but we just couldn't support it on an off-grid system. So mm. our range hood is like, all you really see of it is this, and it will have um, like a, kind of like a proper grill over it with time. Um, and my dad installs range hoods and he designed this for us so that rather than us having a big, you know, space with a fan and, you know, kind of the range hood sitting here, and then having to pump that air either out through this wall or circulating it back into the space, which just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, so we could either push it out through the wall or go up through the roof. So in order to avoid that, because that would cause us a height issue as well as, you know, you're just pumping your air out into where you're likely to be entertaining outside. Mm. It goes down through the wall cavity and then out the bottom of the trailer and the fan sits underneath of the trailer. It's mounted in between the bracing of the trailer and that keeps it you know protected there um but it also just means that the air gets comes up here and then gets sucked in and out on the bottom so that's fantastic i think that's such a clever design so it doesn't have anything that pulls out of that black thing that we can see there it just stays that way yeah mm -hmm. it will have a grill and it'll have some buttons over here because that hasn't been finished yet but it will just be flat wow so, i've never seen that before it's awesome so yeah, then I suppose the other thing to mention while we're just in under here is the LED strip lighting. So we've got lots and lots of lighting in the house. Um, you can pretty much see our ambient lights when they're like, that. you can always see them. But our functional lighting is pretty much all LED strips. And that has been Lucas's dream baby and vision. And he has definitely brought that to life. I was a bit skeptical, but it's awesome. Yeah. And that was, it just makes this space, it's just amazing, it's really good. Um, so that just means that when they're off, you don't even know that they're there, but they create really incredible light that you never have to look into, um, which is great. So our kitchen looks like kitchen, but it pretty much has all of our clothing and you know everything else we need for life in it. Um, our loft just has a bed 
living is just living, so everything else is hidden. So this is our clothing in here. Um, so cool. Lots of baskets. It's just a pull-out pantry design. Um, but you can fill it from either side, so you only have to kind of like access in this far, and you can see everything that you've got. But then that when that pushes in and you come into the bathroom, you can also access it from in the bathroom and get changed. In yeah. The so it acts as a door as well as uh, no, we've got a separate door. So the door slides in behind it. <laughs> and it's got a big mirror so this is our only mirror i'll step away um it's our only mirror in the house <laughs> Hello. so yeah i just made that from an ikea mirror and some old pallets and well two ikea mirrors because i broke one <laughs> yeah so then as you come through here i suppose the only other thing that we really thought of or that was like a specific design choice in the kitchen is to use as much of our kickboard space as we can as little drawers. So these, we've got four kickboard drawers. I don't think if you just come down a bit further, Lucas, um, and they just disappear into the kickboard. So that's so cute. I love that. that space. So that's really cool. That is cool. Yeah, and then we've got a cavity here just for cutting boards and stuff, but predominantly because we wanted to be able to open these drawers when the bathroom door was shut. And then into our bathroom. This is our bump out. So this is actually on the yoke of the trailer. It's not in the house, so to say. So we've got a copper sink and then just a kind of like an extra little roof section outside. Oh, I love right. the use of wallpaper and ornate windows. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. And so that's like, yeah, it sits on the A-frame drawbar. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, on the yoke basically up there and underneath of it is where all our electrical hookups are and out there with all the electrical stuff in it. Fantastic. Eventually we're going to put more shelving in there to have um, store stuff in there as well. And then we've got a shower. We've got a, a little hop in front of the shower, which is a bit hard to show, but um, it's about 20 centimeters. So we can wash a dog or a baby at some stage in there yeah. and have it sort of as a small bath. bath and then yeah, a little got... sitting bath. That's great. Yeah. And I love your use of this pressed metal, what have you painted it with? It's just it's powder, powder coated. coated. Okay. Looks great. And it seems like it would be really light and really appropriate for a bathroom. Very yeah. low profile. Yeah. Mm. It's easy to wipe down and yeah, it's waterproof and um, yeah, very lightweight and very low profile. So you get maximum space still. Yeah, and you get a lovely texture. I think it looks, it's a great effect. I really like it. Yeah, we like it too. We thought about doing timber and we just couldn't figure a way of sealing it or having it the way we liked it. So, yeah. We've got two shower heads in the shower. That was another one of Lucas's um, things that he really wanted to have was double shower heads. So that makes it a really nice space. It's actually really spacious. So our shower is 1.2 metres. I wanted to have a space that I could sit down to shave my legs because it's the most. Um, and yeah, so that was something that we also wanted to have. Mm. And then on the other side, um, over here, we're still waiting. So more shelving will come in here mm -hmm. and have like little LED tracks. And we're also going to have two wall lights um, because at the moment, yeah, yeah we the don't. Bump out the bump out light. lights are the only light that's in here. Oh, okay. So you need a bit in the other spaces. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some shelves there, which we'll put towels and toilet paper and everything on there. Mm -hmm. And then on the ground here, we've just got washing baskets um, here, and our vacuum's also currently living in here because it can't live outside with its freshly oiled floors. And then we've got the, um, I think it's a Civilis Moltrum um, composting toilet. Okay. And the best thing. I don't know why we don't have composting toilets in every house. Um, it's really good. Okay, good. So, what do you like about it? Completely smell free because you've got that permanent fan. 
mm-hmm. running, it um, like pulls any smell away. Yeah, it's, it's really like nice. literally, you know, there's never, you, you never walk into the bathroom and be like, oh, it's a bit smelly in here, ever. Wow. Not even after one's been in the bathroom, which is something that you don't even get in a normal bathroom. No. Um, so it's completely scent free all the time until the fan goes off. If the power goes <laughs> off, you've got a problem. The composting chamber itself is outside of the house, which means that we never have to carry anything through the house and you can do all the servicey stuff from outside and switch the chambers over from outside. Um, so that's awesome. Um, and it's also Australian certified, like council certified. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, it sounds like a really good design. And it's actually a tiny house or a small space model. So the chamber is shorter. It's on the 450 mil high. Yeah, it's 450 mil high instead of the normal, I think, 800 or 700. Yeah. Um, so you have to switch them out a bit more often, but it fits under the, it fits under the house really easily. Yeah, that's really great. Okay, good. We'll show you the loft. This is us. We've made ourselves curtains for up here. Um, so that's just gives us that bit of privacy and it keeps things nice and dark in here. We can like comfortably sit on our bed and I've got like two hands still on top of my head. Um, that's great. So yeah, that's partially because we have built like an inner frame into our rafters so that we could expose the rafters a bit. Yeah. Well, I just love your house. It, it's it's beautiful and it's so clever the way you've designed all the kitchen and the bathroom and you've really come up with a lot of things that looks like it really works for you guys. So I'm impressed. I really like it. Yeah. It's really nice to just sit in the evening on the on the couch and enjoy a nice atmosphere knowing that we've done it all ourselves. Yeah. Thank you to you guys too for mm. our trailer and for Fred for help. I suppose that was someone else that helped out a lot is Fred. So yeah. that was massive. Oh, great. Well, thanks so much. Bye for now. Bye. See ya. You can follow Brian Lucas on Instagram under the handle dream plan do repeat. I'll have that in the show notes as well as all the links that we talked about in like the tiny house composting toilet and any of the other links that we talked about will be in the show notes. You can catch this um, counter tiny house as a podcast. The full form interview will be in the podcast. They tell us a lot about using the wood polonia for internal and external cladding um, came up against heaps of concerns and problems with that, but she told us eventually how they solved them. So that's really, really important. If you're thinking about using a super light weight um, exterior cladding which is a wood um, and polonia really meets that requirement but geez it sounds like it takes a lot of preparation which they go through and they share with us their journeys the difficult things that they faced and how they got through them they share information about you know what the support they had and how they came to their decisions what their budget was what their weight considerations have been and overall what it's been like to work through this project. It's taken a long time, but I'm really impressed with what they've come up with. It's a pleasure to bring it to you. I'm Shannon Schultz from Fred's Tiny Houses. Thanks for listening. Candid Tiny House is brought to you by Fred's Tiny Houses and Tiny House University. Get the authoritative knowledge, learn what it's really like, make informed decisions, and get yourself on tinyhouseuniversity.com.au.